Just give it a break for a sec. Have you flooded it? Yeah. We just stand here on the boat ramp and admire the view. The shark's next meal is Peter <laughs> and Margaret Powell from Cairns in Queensland. Yay! <laughs> We've been married for... <laughs> <laughs> 33 and a half years. <laughs> Not that I'm counting. <laughs> Far North Queensland has the best of everything. We have the reef, we have the rainforest, and there's lots of creeks and rivers. Look at that, beautiful, isn't it? What inspired the product? My passion for the reef. And I just wanted to do something that is a solution to a long-term environmental problem. It's really helpful to boaties and it limits the footprints that you leave behind. It will hopefully be adopted by everybody who owns a boat. We've invested what we have to retire on, really. We put it all into this device. I wonder where the crocodiles are hiding today. He's really brilliant in what he's invented and sometimes in life you don't get enough credit for what you're good at. And so I had said to him at the time, even if it cost us our house, we would persevere with this. But after working side by side for years, Peter is insisting that Margaret face the sharks alone. The invention is my side, and I feel Margaret's the better person for the shark tank than I am, but I'll, I'll be there for her if she needs me and, and supportive of her. Hi, sharks. My name's Margaret Powell, and I'm really excited to show you our innovative device, the Catch and Release Anchor Retrieval System. We're seeking an investment of $200,000 with 20% equity in our business. The Catch and Release is an anchor retrieval system that allows you to pull your anchor up the way that it went in without causing damage to the reef, even if your anchor's stuck. Yeah, nice. When you pull up your anchor, you're pulling it through whatever it's attached to. So this can cause catastrophic damage. If you have a think about the 850,000 recreational vessels that are registered in Australia, or when they go on a fishing trip, they're pulling up that anchor three or four times every time they go out. It's not just the environment that's at stake here, though. Stuck anchors have been known to capsize boats and to cause damage to those boats or even drownings. In fact, it was an incident on our own boat that started all of this many years ago. So Peter, my husband, decided to set to work and find a better solution. As he would put it, after many years and many, many beers, <laughs> we've come up with a simple, easy to use and environmentally friendly device. It will retrofit to most anchors and is able to be used on recreational vessels up to about 40 feet. Let me show you how it works. So here I am in my boat. I'm ready to pull up the anchor and guess what? It's stuck. So I have a sleeve that stays up in the boat until you're ready to retrieve. The device, as you can see, is on the anchor at all times. So you let the sleeve down. I'll just do it gently. It compresses the pins, releases the coupling, enables you to pull the anchor up the way that it went in. Oh, do that again. Impressive. That was like a magic trick. You have the sleeve up, you let it down, it compresses the pin and pulls it upside down and pulls the anchor up. That's yeah, well done. Yeah, yeah, no, great job. Fabulous. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Margaret, so you're looking for $200,000 for 20% yeah. of your company, valuing it at a cool $1 million. Yes, that's the actual collar that yeah. slides down. You can see that it has a taper. So every type of anchor you can retrofit it to? Uh, most types of anchor. We haven't found that one that you can't because all that you need is the attachment point at the top of the anchor for the extra piece of chain. Yeah. This is a fantastic bit of kit. Can you go through the economics? What's, what's the cost to manufacture, do you think? About $100 manufacture. 100 bucks, OK. $100 to manufacture, and yeah. the wholesale price, you're thinking, is? Uh, 230 That's average of across the board. Recommend retail is 295 we have actually sold 150. 
you already yes. tested in the marketplace. Yes. So in terms of getting the price down, yes. you've obviously... Gone offshore. What are we going to get it down to? $40 or $50 to make. That would be fantastic if you can do that. Do you have a patent protection on this? Yes, we do. Right. How long ago was that applied for? A long time ago. We have three years left on our patents. Oh, Margaret, three years left. I know. You're killing me, Margaret. What happened in the last 15 years that you only got three years left on your patent? Because we couldn't get a manufacturer to manufacture them properly. Margaret, why did it take you three years to come to Shark Tank? Well, I had no sales initially. It doesn't stop most people walking through that door. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> really, if someone's going to invest in this, they've got to make hay for the next three years. After that point, someone can legally copy it. Yes. Margaret, where's Peter? He's the inventor, right? He's hiding out the back. <laughs> he's hiding? What do you mean he's hiding? Is he scared of us? He believes he's the inventor and he's done his bit, so I have to do the rest. <laughs> Should I go get him? Yeah, yeah bring Absolutely. him out. Absolutely. He cannot hide from us. It's safe in here. She's obviously got the US patent, but, you know, three years to run, hello. Hard work. What do you think, Glenn? I like it. My biggest issue, quite simply, is the recommended retail price. I think it's got to be under 100 bucks, and then you're going to roll them off. What's happening? You need to come into the Sharks and, and meet them, so if we want to get a deal. Oh, OK. okay. Let's do it. What if it became a marine standard? If you want to take a fishing boat out, you've got to have this on there. That'll boost sales. Yeah. Peter, we've heard a lot about you and we've seen some of your work. Welcome to the tank. Thank you very much. What inspired you to spend so much time on this? I love the reef. I grew up on the reef. And I wanted to do my little bit time in the world to help this. That's exactly where I got to in my headspace. This is an environmental thing more than anything. So every time you drop an anchor, yeah. you drop it with one of these because you're going to do less impact to the environment. Oh, my word. Yeah. Mate, why'd you sit on it for 17 years? I'm sitting here wanting to do this deal, and I've got a three-year shop clock working against me. Um, I was trying to um, prototype it, and I, I sort of, when I wanted something done, I was put on a low priority everywhere I went. So I had to basically build my own shed, get my own machines and do it myself. So you actually acquired all the machine tools to build the prototype yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I thought this was a hobby. This has been a complete obsession. Yeah. Has Margaret been any support? Oh, couldn't do it without her. Uh, simple as that. Um, hmm. She's the big driver now, really, you know? Like... It means everything to us because we've basically spent our retirement, so we need to make this work. When you start down the business journey, You've got to be cleverer. Yep. Because the downside of it is bankruptcy, exhaustion of your retirement funds, not leaving legacy for your kids. That's the downside when you stuff it up, right? That's right. Please don't take this too personally, but you've stuffed it up. Margaret and Peter Powell are looking for an investment in their catch and release anchor retrieval system. But with only three years left on their patent, they're struggling to haul in a shark. When you start down the business journey, you've got to be cleverer. Yep. Because the downside of it is bankruptcy, exhaustion of your retirement funds, not leaving legacy for your kids. That's the downside when you stuff it up, right? That's right. Please don't take this too personally, but you've stuffed it up. Margaret, Peter, I'll tell you where I'm at. Look, I love your enthusiasm and your passion for the reef. You know, we should all admire that. And, and your tenacity. 15 years banging away at this, and then in the end having to make it yourself with your own bare hands. Fantastic. Sadly, you tried to make the product yourself yes. and create a business out of the product. What you could have done is find someone who could 
make it, distribute it, sell it, and give you a piece of the action, a license. Oh, and I'm still prepared for somebody to offer us a royalty and to do that, certainly. I wished we'd got to you earlier, but for those reasons, I wish you well, but I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. I so want to do this deal, but every financial part of my brain says, don't, don't, don't. I can't find a reason to do this deal because of the, the three-year shot clock. I'm out. I'm so sorry. I'm out. If, if I can think of a way to help you, I, I will reach out to you. I, I, I want to do something. It won't be an investment today. Yep. Thanks for this. It, it will help save the region. Thank you. Thank you very much, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a great invention. I can't get past the fact that you've spent an absolute fortune on patents and haven't done anything with them for 15 to 17 years. I'm out. OK, thanks, Jenny. So, Margaret and Peter... Yes, no. ..hats off to you. It's really fabulous. I happen to be spending six weeks around the corner from you this summer. So, given that I'm going to be in your region for six weeks, I'm really happy to mentor you. That would be fabulous. So, let me spend some time with you and let's see what we can come up with. That would be wonderful. But for this deal, right now, I'm out. So, four sharks are out, just one shark left. So, I keep reminding myself, I'm an investor, not a charity. Yeah. And the investor side of my brain, which is the nasty side, <laughs> then works out how to position so that if this goes well, I get the upside, but I also minimise the risk on the downside. This has got the environmental thing, you know. That... So I'm just struggling, deeply struggling. I'm going to throw an offer at you. I want 100% of the company for 200,000 with a 5% royalty all the way through. Forever and ever. Can we just can we just restart the offer because this has never been offered in the tank. I'm buying the company. The 200,000 goes to them. It doesn't go into the company. Is that what it is, Glenn? Yeah. You get all your money back and maybe some upside if he gets it off the ground 5%. Normally, I'd tell you to run away from that deal and that it's a load of crap. But you want to save the reef. You've only got three years to go and you've done your retirement money on it. So I actually have to say it's not a bad offer. I've got to look at the exact reason why this has been going on, and I've stuck at it, and Margaret's stuck at it too. It's, it's about our dream, and um, my passion for the reef. I think, well, I know you have got more of a chance to fulfil this dream than I'll have in the amount of time we've got left. So for that reason, I'm happy with you, mate. Good. Hey, well done. You just won the lottery. That is <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> I know that was a very, very hard decision, but yeah. I, I oh, think yeah. it's Sorry, good. Pete, for a vet is a nice Thank one. You. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Sorry. Well done, you guys. Well, done. you did do that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Margaret. Congratulations, guys. Really, congratulations. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you sold your company. I know. Who would have thought that? I get, were you expecting that at all? No, as not at all. Today? Not at all. I always knew that having only three years left was going to be an issue. And, um, yeah, but that's awesome. Can you imagine what it's like for them? Amazing. Life-changing. Today they came in to the tank and their life forever is changed. Because you will make a difference to the planet. I'm happy, yeah. It's for the passion of the reef. 
in the environment out there, and um, that's that's my dream. They loved you and your product, and yep, um, that's great. All the best for the future, hey. Thank you. Yeah, thank you thank very, you much. very much. much. Thank you. This way, no risk, their dreams fulfilled, they sit back, take a royalty. I, I can see where this will be a lot of fun and it's important. So, will this Melbourne couple be able to get the sharks to see that their business is ready to be a household name? You, a bit there you, go. Thank you. you need some help. <laughs> we are so excited to be going to the shark tank today because it's the opportunity of a lifetime. Be great. Thank you. For us to get investment, it would mean the world. It would mean taking something that we are so passionate about around Australia and to other people. Hi Sharks, my name's Andy. And I'm Jasmine. And we're the creators of The Pole Room. Today, we're asking for $100,000 for a 15% share of equity in our company. The Pole Room is a manifestation of our belief that exercise should always be fun. So we've developed a pole dancing for fitness program that can take anybody of any age, of any past experience. Sharks, with your investment of $100,000, we plan to take our pole dancing for fitness program online and franchise our operations across Australia. The Pole Room is ready to put the health and fitness industry into a spin. Oh dear. <laughs> Oh, very nice. Wow, that core strength. Great core strength. That's impressive. Very good. <laughs> so that was Andy and Jasmine. Correct. And you're looking 15% for $100,000. So you're valuing it around 660. Is that right? That's correct. Correct. Yeah. Who wants to give it a go? <clears throat> I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to go. <laughs> Stepping with the right foot, what you're going to do is you're going to come around, you're going to bring your knees together, and you're going to spin around. Yeah! Oh, wow! Oh, <laughs> okay, not quite dressed for it. <laughs> well done. Well done. That deserves a five dollar note. So where did you start? How did you start the business, and how did you fund it? We actually started with a very small amount. I quit my job when I was 23. I was in retail and doing PT and I'd finally had enough and I decided to open a pole studio with $2,000. And I was very lucky to be gifted by an old student of mine, uh, $10,000, who believed very much in me. Wow. It's quite emotional thinking about it. Um, she... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> She's really unwell. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. It's OK. She's... Take your time. <sighs> they say that all we need is one person to believe yeah. in us. It was everything. You're absolutely right. It was the difference between me going back into retail and me finding a small space. And I set up eight poles. And I taught pretty much every class. <laughs> and within a, a few months, six months, Andy had quit his job and we moved into a 400 metre square factory. That's a fantastic piece of generosity. But uh, what's the earning capacity of investment into a pole dancing studio? So in 2015-16, our total revenue was 450000 And so after everyone gets paid, yeah. and all the bills get paid, what's the bottom line? Yeah, so we profited $100,000. Very well done. I mean, nothing to be sneezed at there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jasmine, you've got $100,000 investment. Tell me about three years. What can I expect as an investor? In our three-year goal is to have 30 studios around Australia. At the moment, there are no national brands that are nationwide. There are only studios statewide. We would like to be the first. What is, uh, what is your franchise model? It's the owner-operator model. So we want our franchisees to come in and actually you know, be at the front desk, you know, welcoming the students. You know, we want to build community in these studios. One of the major issues with you know, whether it's yoga or Pilates or pole dancing is getting great talent. Yes. And you can't just replace it. Oh, hang on, they've left. Can you do it? Mm. <laughs> so how do you deal with that issue? Our staff are our business and we try to look after them as best as possible. But a lot of them come through the studio. We develop them ourselves. And so what's it cost to set up a studio, so to speak? We've calculated to be around 163000 To open one studio? To open a studio, correct. It's a lot of pole. Poles are quite expensive. Um, I'd like to at least think that I could participate in the businesses that I, get, uh, that I invest in. <laughs> Can't see yourself on a pole? <laughs> Can't quite see myself on a pole. All the best. I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. 
Andy and Jasmine, I can tell you where I'm at. You know, it's interesting, but it's not exciting and scalable for me. Uh, I wish you well, but I'm not the right partner for you. But I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. It's in the wellness and health space, and you're putting a fun factor to it. What don't I like? It's a very early stage business. For that reason, I'm out. Totally fair. Thank you. Thanks. So three sharks are out. We've got two left. Jasmine and Andy, congratulations. Thank you. The thing that I do know about the fitness pace is it's a very cluttered market. Correct. And for that reason, I'm out. Thank you. Thanks. You are very impressive. And there's, there's a few things that sort of cross my mind, because in actual fact, I go, oh, I'd like to do a deal with you, because I think we could work really well together. Um, there's a couple of things that I've got to sort of get some clarity around. The first one is getting um, a franchisee you've got a small pool. And the reason you've got a small pool is you need someone, one passionate about pole dancing, and to make money, they need to work in it. Yes. The second one is I have never seen uh, an industry so quickly growing of Pilates and, and yoga. And the reason that's an issue for you is because it's a land grab. Yes. And trying to find those great studios is really difficult at the moment. Do you know, we have a retention rate of 80%. It's pretty good. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, really? Really. There's no industry that has an 80% <laughs> retention rate in the exercise. None. That's why this is so great. Wow. Oh, come on, Janine, they're in Melbourne. <laughs> you look so good on the pole. Jasmine and her partner Andy have just pitched their idea to franchise their Melbourne-based pole dancing studio across the country. Do you know we have a retention rate of 80%? Pretty good. Very well done. I mean, nothing to be sneezed at there. There's no industry that has an 80% retention rate in the exercise. None. That's why this is so great. Wow. But despite impressing the sharks, Janine is the only one left who looks like she might do a deal. Oh, look, you know what my problem is? I know too much. I know too much about franchising. I know how hard it is. I think one of the things with our program that makes it sort of unique and would give us the opportunity to bring franchisees into the business is because once you complete a level, you can then go and teach it potentially. Yeah, but a good, a good pole dancer doesn't make a good business person or a good course, pole yeah. dancer doesn't make a good yeah. franchisee. So you've got to kind of get the combination. That's why the, the pool gets smaller and smaller and smaller. I'm sorry, I'm out. No problem. Ooh. I'll um, give you my email address oh. and come in and um, I'll talk about how you can actually franchise this well. You're wonderful. Thank you. My pleasure. We used to live in Ringwood East and I, when I was reading your book, I was like, Janine used to live here. That's right, I did. <laughs> There's magic <laughs> in the water. <laughs> <laughs> there is. There is. All the best to you. Thank you so well much. Well done. Well done, ladies. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. <laughs> how great was it? That someone believed in her. I know. That someone believed in her. She got the $10,000. And that woman didn't do it for the money. No, she, she did it because she was backing a winner. No, I just right. thought that was beautiful. Next into the tank, a young personal trainer hoping to build, sculpt and tone his business. I need the money to get my business where I want it to be, so I need the shark's expertise. Hi Sharks, my name's Brad, I'm 26 years old, from Ballarat, Victoria, and today I'm seeking $200,000 for 20% equity in my business 360 Gym. So what is a 360 Gym? 360 Gym is the world's first portable outdoor strength training gym. So it incorporates all of your traditional indoor gym equipment and the exercises that are only capable indoors, and it places them in an outdoor setting. Something that's never been done before. So, it comes with up to 17 strength training machines. It comes with all your bars, attachments, and weights, and it's ready to train from day one. 
The main benefits are it's portable, so personal trainers can have their strength classes in the park or at the client's home. It's much more cost effective than buying all of the traditional equipment and 360 Gym places your business directly in a niche. So it separates your business from your competitors and that's what every business needs. So Sharks, I know 360 Gym will be an integral part of the outdoor fitness industry in the future and I'd love for a shark to jump on board and help me take it there. Oh, good on Fantastic. You. Well done. Good on you, Brad. So Thank that's 200000 for 20%, so you're valuing yes. your business at a cool $1 million. Yep, that's okay. it. Okay. Can go I on. check it out, mate? Yep. Yeah, let's have a go. What, sure. What's happening here? What are we doing? So um, this is fully set up here. You've got lat pull down here. Yeah. This is a back exercise. You've got seated row here. It's not how you use it, Steve. <laughs> Don't pull the muscle. <clears throat> Too good at it. We should swap jobs. How long does it take to set the whole thing up? So it takes around 10 minutes. Couple green day. But depending on how many people you're training. Did you invent this? Yes. How fantastic, Aussie ingenuity. Thank you. I appreciate it. So your background. So you're from Ballarat. Yep. So what made a boy from Ballarat go? I'm going to invent a mobile gym. Um, so I had a background in building trailers and engineering and then I wanted a career change. Two years ago, I studied to become a personal trainer. 90% uh, of the students in my class really struggled to find work. That was because they didn't have a niche. So I thought I'd go out and do something different and build a mobile gym. Well, how much have you put in this business and what, what does that thing cost? Um, I've put 50,000, everything I have. I'll put all my money into it. How are you living? What do you do? Are you, have you got enough? Uh, I currently draw a small wage, $300 a week through 360 Gym. So that's enough to scrape by. What's it like living on 300 bucks a week? I don't really have a social life at the moment, so... Where do you stay? I stay with my father at the moment. I did live in Queensland. I moved back down to do the business, so he lets me use his warehouse at the moment. In Ballarat? Yeah. So you're sleeping on your dad's couch? I live in the shed, actually, at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why you don't have much of a social life. Yeah. So how much are you selling them for? 2490 25 grand? So you're pretty cheap then, aren't you? I've, I've done market research and everybody seems happy with the price. Brad, I agree with Steve. I think it's, you're far too cheap. What's it costing you to build it? It costs me 16000 but I've spoke to the supplier and we can bring this down by 20% just by ordering in larger quantities. So 13000 bucks you can bring it down to? Yep. What are you going to do with that 200000 bucks, mate? Stock. I can't afford the stock at the moment. I've calculated the 200,000 will get me through the first three months, but uh, we should be seeing money back by then to make the next order. And you need 40% up front to buy the parts. So if someone, someone buys one of these things from you, what, are they, what do you charge them and do you charge up front? I charge a 20% deposit. Why don't you charge like a 40% deposit and that way that pays for all your parts up front? I didn't think of that. And, and, and more, more importantly, there's, no, there's another, another trick you missed here, right, which is basically financing these things. What you should do is whack 35,000 bucks on it, put it through a finance, so they're going to pay 40% of that up front, and the rest is financed through. And these things will move and you make more money. It'll be bloody fantastic. I think Steve's point is a damn good one. Think about putting the price up a bit and putting a financing package with it. You thought you were doing really well till you came in here, didn't you? <laughs> yes. I need to learn more about business, but I've been doing a lot in that area. I've been reading books and everything, and... Um, well, you're only 26. You, you, you're entitled to still be learning a bit. I think, you know, I'm 65 and I'm still learning. Yeah. The product's great, so there's a big tick. Fundamentally, though, I think you haven't quite got the, the business model worked out I quite agree, right. Yeah, I agree. Um, but I reckon you, you're definitely in the right direction. You just need to tweak, which is, which is what we all do when we need to get into business. But right now, with the business model where it is, I'm out. Yeah, thanks anyway. So, Brad, I'm wondering whether you need a business partner or an investor, because they're two different things. Uh, a business partner is somebody who can really help you with the business model versus an investor who is looking for returns. But for this deal, I'm not your business partner, so I'm out. Thanks for that, anyway. You've just got to go down to the, the, the park in the morning, I go for a walk at 5am with the dog in the morning, and the place is chock as full of, of ad hoc personal training sessions. So, you know, there, there's definitely demand for it. People don't want to go into the gym. We should come here with a plan. Yeah. Your plan was 200,000 bucks and can you please help me? 
I definitely have a plan. All right, come well, on. Come on, convince me then. It's convince so me. early in the business. C c convince me. Convince me you've got a plan. I buy entrepreneurs who have vision. If, if I have to inject vision into you, I'm not going to invest in you. Only three sharks remain in the game for Brad and his mobile gym. Right now, with the business model where it is, I'm out. I'm not your business partner, so I'm out. Has his lack of business naps jeopardised any chance of investment? I wish you'd come here with a plan. Yeah. Your plan was 200,000 bucks and can you please help me? I definitely have a plan. All right, come well, on. Come on, convince me then. It's convince so me. early in the business. C convince me. Convince me you've got a plan. I buy entrepreneurs who have vision. If, if I have to inject vision into you, I'm not going to invest in you. Next year, I'm going to sell 40 units. Yep. And that'll be a million dollars in revenue. Like I said, I'm going to bring the price down to 13,000 by ordering larger quantities. And then that'll be a revenue of 50%. How can you build 40 of these things? OK, now convince me you can push one of these things out a week. I made this one in about a week. <laughs> Did you? No, I'll show I up. get all the parts, though. <laughs> I get the parts because it's all, it's pretty much done. I think 200 grand is what you need, right? Um, I'm, I'm not sure you're ready to, to swallow it, though. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait and see what the rest of them say. Oh, I'm, I don't know. I, I like something that's painted red. All right. <laughs> there you go. Let's stow that. We need to change the colour if I do something. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, Brad, what we've got, we've got Naomi and I are out. You've got three boys in. Brad, very interesting. Um, and I think, as these guys have all said, the business model is much closer to equipment hire and a kind of a leasing plan, but you do need to get that advice. Stay with this plan. This business really has legs, um, but you haven't got your business plan ready yet. You're on your way, but for those reasons, I'm out. Thanks anyway, I appreciate it. What, what I do love about you is the fact you, you've had a little entrepreneurial seizure, you've actually develop something that's pretty impressive. So, you know, the reality is, if I got involved with you, I'd have to put my workout gear on and be in the business with you. And that's not my play. I, I am an investor, and it's not an investment for me. But I'm going to give you something that, that rather than give you money, I'm going to give you my time. Oh! Because I think you need a good one-day planning session. These guys? Glenn, include me in that session. OK. So Steve and I are prepared to do, play with your head for a day on where this could get to. At the end of the session, we may want to invest, but today I'm not investing. All right. And that's a, that's a big thing. Thanks, Glenn. I really appreciate it. So unfortunately, Brad, today I'm out. Thanks anyway. Appreciate your time. <sighs> you don't have a plan yet. That's your biggest problem. And if I was going to put 200 grand into you, mate, I'd, I'd make you a minority shareholder at this point in time, I'm afraid. I'm so looking forward to the strategy session. There's a model out there that's going to work for you. That's amazing. I've so enjoyed this. I am out. I, I wish you all the best, and I, and I look forward to you being amazingly successful in the future. Thanks, anyway. I appreciate it. Good luck to you, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks so best, much Brad. for your time. See you later. Take care. Love Keep your going. ingenuity. Keep Thank going. you. See you later, guys. Good guy. Good guy. I'm a bit upset I didn't get the investment but I think I've got some really good advice, so I'm definitely happy about that. So, Steve, I think we'll need to get him up to Brisbane. I think so, yeah, we'll fly him. Fly him up. Just have it in your wine cellar. We'll get lots done. Next on Shark Tank is an entrepreneur who, despite her young age, has already been lucky in business. I'm Bethany, I'm 20 years old, and I'm from Lismore, New South Wales. I would describe myself as driven, ambitious, and hardworking most of the time. My father, Tim Spore, is a pastor. Okay, let's say thanks. Grace, health, and strength to us all. Amen. I have really fond memories of growing up. We'd tour out of the Evangeline bus preaching the gospel. I've always been an entrepreneur. I've also won numerous awards, both locally, state, and nationally. It's just following God and being able to work for the glory of God. For me, I feel that that's given me a competitive edge in business. I believe the sharks will like my product. I think that it's something new that's never been done before.
Good evening, Sharks. First, I'd like to start by thanking you for the opportunity to come here today to share with you my business. Today, I am asking for a $40,000 investment for 30% stake in my company. My name is Bethany Grace Spork, and I'm 20 years old. Please consider investing in me. Wow. Before the break, we met 20-year-old Bethany Grace, a high achiever from Lismore with a spiritual approach to business. Today, I am asking for a $40,000 investment for 30% stake in my company. My name is Bethany Grace Spore, and I'm 20 years old. I've been making skincare products with the ingredients from my parents' farm since I was a kid, and I launched my business, bethanygrace.net, for natural skincare products when I was 13. Wow. Wow. In my business, I love that I can make products from scratch to match my skin type and match my needs. And I want everyone to have the freedom to do this as well. <laughs> Introducing the Custom Skincare Shop. Products made by experts on the spot, step by step, with all the ingredients that you choose. It's about interaction. I want to launch a new online store where you can build your products online through the interactive mobile app or come in store to see the action. I'm a young Aussie entrepreneur with a small business, but big plans for the future and innovative growth. So if you'd like to join me in this mission to help change the world's approach to natural beauty, please consider investing in me. So if you'd like to come off, off your chairs and experience this journey with me as I freestyle create a product. All right, I'll have a look. Yeah, okay. I'll go as well. <laughs> you need all the help you can get, mate. Jean, how are you? I'm Bethany. Hi, Bethany. Lovely, lovely to meet lovely you. Lovely to meet you too. So today I'm making an invigorating peppermint bath scrub. So this here is shea nut butter, and it's to maintain a good balance of oils in the skin. And then next, I'm just gonna add the peppermint oil. So it's a bit of a neutral fragrance, so you can try it as well later. <laughs> um, Riverbank sand, and that's a great exfoliant, not too harsh, yep. gentle, so you can still use it on your face. Wow. It does smell amazing. Yeah. We'll go and sit down. That's all, that's all great. So what are you demonstrating for us now? I don't so understand that. So in the that. custom skincare shop, right. so that will be an online function where you can go on there, work with the beauty expert to create a product that's right for you. So it'll be like a mobile game app. You go through a forest and you choose the ingredients to go into a virtual jar and, and send so, it on. And then, right, so it's an online. Yeah. Yep. But isn't it going to cost more for customization? Well, if you go to a restaurant somewhere and you order a meal, yep. that meal is made pretty well from scratch. They yes. put everything together, but they've got processes in order so that they just know how to do it quickly. A lot like Boost Juice. Yep. You go there, we know the recipe, we know how to put it together. Yep. We can just throw it all together and create the product for you. Actually, it's beautiful. So what difference will $40,000 make to your business and what are you going to spend it on? It will achieve the online store fully functioned. I want it to be something that's quality, something that people get excited about. At the moment, I've got a lot of people that are waiting, that are keen for it. They want to be able to create their own product from scratch. It's just not there yet. And I don't want to present it unless it's quality. Very confident for a 20-year-old. You're doing a damn good job. Thank you. So walk me through how tough it is or how easy it is as a 20-year-old to be an entrepreneur. I love it. Um, I started when I was five years old. Um, I was making my own jewellery products. Then at the age of nine, I was making handmade cards and selling them to florists around town. And then rose to being a manager across four stores at McDonald's. Good training. Fantastic training. That was all I could get, but I embraced that opportunity. When you're sitting there with a manufacturer and trying to negotiate a contract price to produce the Bethany Grace Ray, I mean, do they take you seriously? Um, when I was younger, I found that difficult. For me, I was a very shy girl. Being homeschooled, my dad's a pastor. But I feel that through the um, McDonald's process and through coming to here and doing a degree in business, I feel that that's given me that passion. So you've got a degree in business? Yes. At the age of 20? Yes. Congratulations. Well done. Wow. Well done. Well done. Thank you. And Dad was a pastor? Yes, he still is. Any brothers and sisters? Yes. <laughs> Funny you should ask that. Homeschooled <laughs> pastor, he has 11 children. Wow. Eight in my immediate family. Yeah, I'm the middle child of the eight. You've picked the, one of the most competitive yes. <laughs> industries in the world. Yes. So how are you going to compete? That's why I needed something different. So that's where I came up with a custom shop. Sales to date? In the first three weeks, it made $3,500. Mm. And that was averaging at 250 a day for the first month. Since then, it's slowed down a little bit. 
for the sales today, eight and a half thousand. And the cost of producing those? At retail price, it is 47% profit. And then at wholesale price, 28% profit. Hey, uh, Bethany, um, I've really enjoyed this. You said consider an investment in me. Yeah. I think you're the first person who's come in here and said, you need to invest in me, not my business. And that was really refreshing. And you are exceptionally investable. Thank you. Um, you are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, I know nothing about the cosmetics industry <laughs> at all. I'm probably planning to keep it that way. But I ain't your man, so I'm out. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, sir. It was lovely to meet you, and I just appreciate your kind words. Thank you so much. No worries. Cheers. You know, part of the joy of your product is you. It's how you present it. So the thing for me is I can't see how we can bottle what you stand for and your energy on the farm if you got a massive order. I'm unsure of how I could do that. Yeah. So alas, for this, I'm not going to be an investor, but I'll be a great advocate. But for this investment, I'm out. Thank you so much. Lovely to meet you once again. Thank you. I'm actually taking you very seriously as a, as a young entrepreneur. Thank I think you, sir. You, you're, you're red hot passion for the industry you're in and the products you're doing and the business you're doing. Um, but it's not my cup of tea. I am concerned about the unproven business model. So good luck, but I'm out. Fantastic. Thank you so much, sir. Pleasure. Love to meet you. I'm still thinking. Are you in? It's worth $40,000 just to give her a job. Yes, That's I what think, you're thinking. I was thinking That's the same thing myself, thinking. actually, as well. I know yeah. you. Um, look, Bethany, unbelievable. And what a great example you are. But I don't particularly buy the market you've chosen on this occasion, but you're 20, and there's going to be so many great opportunities. So keep going. I definitely believe in you, but it's not an investable opportunity for me. Yeah. I'm out. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And then there was one. <laughs> and then there was one. Um, the problem is, there's only one you. Yes. You could not have picked a harder industry to get into if you tried, okay? But you're passionate about it. Bethany, I would love to do a deal with you. I would love it. You're not getting my money, but you'll get my contact details. Thank you. I will work with you over the next few years, and whether it's this one or another one, I will I will be your unofficial mentor. That's I'm fantastic. Out. We want to keep tabs on you. <laughs> yeah, we'll be watching. Thank well you. done. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. You did, Thank you, you well did an awesome job. Thank well you. done. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. It's been a privilege. Lovely Thank to you. Meet you. Enjoy your trip back to Lismore, Thanks mate. Thanks so much. Yeah, I will. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, I wonder if she's up for adoption. Oh, mate, I'd have her. Amazing. I was thinking, I was thinking to myself, you know, business degree, just bring her on as a, as a research analyst or a something for a year. I was serious, $40,000 is worth it, you know, that's a recruiter's fee. You did not hear me say I'll give her my contact I know. details? Amazing. <laughs> Our next entrepreneur is hoping she can take the sharks in the right direction. I've literally sacrificed everything to be able to make my dream, my passion, come to life. Hi Sharks, my name is Lisa Pagotto and I'm the founder of boutique tour operator Crooked Compass. Today, I'm seeking $70,000 for 15% of my business. Travel is becoming more about depth rather than breadth of experience, and the off-the-shelf holiday package is going out of style. People are now seeking a more raw and sensory way to experience our world. They want to do what the local people do, eat what the local people eat, and live how the local people live. The regions that we travel to, we focus on the lesser known side. The picture in the centre there is one of the sides of Peru that we sell. This is the Rainbow Mountains. Wow. And I can confidently tell you that there are not many people that would actually know that that side of Peru exists. Another example I'd like to give you is in East Africa. Generally, when people head to Africa, they usually want to have some sort of culturally immersive experience with a tribe. And in East Africa, this is generally the Maasai. 
Unfortunately, though, the Maasai tribes are becoming really touristy and quite commercial. It's pretty rare to go to a village and not see a Maasai with a mobile phone or a motorbike. We spend so much time researching to make sure that the experiences that we offer are truly authentic. We found two hunter-gatherer tribes in East Africa who still live a very traditional and nomadic lifestyle, as you can see in the picture over to the side there. I'm obsessed with finding these experiences that are new and unique and that people haven't heard of, but most importantly, what's not on offer by any other operator within the Australian and New Zealand marketplace. So who wants to come with me and follow a different path as we take Crooked Compass to the next level? OK. Thank you, Lisa. $70,000 for 15%, yes. so valuing at around $466,000. Yes. But Lisa? Yes. Isn't it a good thing the Maso can now afford mobile phones and motorcycles? Well, it, <laughs> it is and it isn't. I mean, in terms well, it's of... It's a bad thing for us, uh, for us uh, you know, first worlders who want to go and look at these um, poor Maasai in their Stone Age existence. But, I mean, I get what you're saying, but, you know, it's a, it's a bit like taking people to a zoo, isn't it? No. They, they, they're happy with their life. They don't want to have to have a mobile phone. Mobile phones don't necessarily make life better. So if there's, what Lisa's saying is there's villagers that still live in the original world and they're happy about it. <laughs>
Well, are you in a hurry? Have you got somewhere to go, Stevie? No, I don't actually have somewhere to go. So, well, you know. Are you in? No. You were out. I, I was out. I was out. I was, I was just, um... Listening to all I had to say, you got the words of wisdom and now you're thinking you'll be back in? Um, and haven't you learned yet, Naomi? I don't actually listen to you. So... OK. What would give you the quantum leap, though? Because travel is all about distribution. Yes. What would give you the quantum leap where you would suddenly leapfrog all the small guys and be the next Abercrombie and Kent coming through? Well, I don't, I don't think that it's about becoming the next big one. It's about becoming known as the specialist who does, like, you know, when so someone says the name... you don't want to be name, a big specialist? I don't want to be, like, a flight centre size. I think you're incredibly authentic. I don't see how I can scale it with you. Uh, I think I'll be a customer, but I'm out. OK, thank you. Lisa, I love your passion. I mean, you can actually... Oh, thank you. I, you know, I was 21, I put a backpack on my back and travelled for seven years. So, you know, I, I have that bug and you can see it in you. Uh, for me, the scalability of the model isn't there as an investment. I'm out. OK, problems. Just one shark left. I love your brand. Thank you. I love your passion, but we'll enjoy hearing about how you scale this business up and look forward to Crooked Compass being a very important brand in this space. But unfortunately, today I'm not an investor. I'm out. No problem. Thank you. All right, so I, I'm going to come back. I've got another business called Travel Shoot. What we do is we, uh, we actually arrange for a professional photographer to meet people in icon destinations. So instead okay. of the selfie in front of the Eiffel Tower just after you've been engaged, you get a professional photo. And so th there's certain sort of um, uh, synergies between this business and, and that one. Um, so, uh, Steve, are you in? Are you doing an offer? What's happening here? Rightio. So I, I shan't be as long-winded as Naomi, if that's at all possible. <laughs> um, Once again, I, I, I'm troubling to see the scalability and what you're doing there. Um, so, sorry to give you a little bit of false hope there. Um, I'm out again. I tried. I'm going to continue to contact you, continue across promotion or something along those lines. Um, but look, I've really enjoyed listening to you. It's been fantastic. Great. Thanks, guys. Great yeah. All the best. And you did a great job. Thank, Thank you. Lisa. See you fantastic. later. Fantastic. I'm sure you've won some customers here today. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Take you. Take care. See you Thank later. Thank you. Cyclone Steve. We never know where he's going. No, you don't know where <laughs> Steve's going. <laughs> Steve doesn't know where he's going either. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you have to pay her for advice? Next into the tank is a savvy 17-year-old who's not letting school get in the way of his sweet entrepreneurial dreams. My ultimate goal for my business is to be a household name throughout the world. Age is no barrier. Cool pants. <laughs> Hi Sharks, my name is Morgan Hipworth. I'm 17 years old and I'm the owner and founder of Bistro Morgan, an artisan donut store based in Melbourne. Oh, oh, no. oh no. Today I'm here for $200,000 in exchange for 20% equity in my business. Bistro Morgan was born when I was 13 years old and I started supplying a cafe with local goods. From there, things just kind of blew up. I was featured in numerous media outlets, and a whole whirlwind of opportunities came at me. I ended up supplying around 20 cafes around Melbourne until I was absolutely desperate on a permanent store. And my parents being, you know, parents, they were like, no, you're not allowed a permanent store till you're out of school. <laughs> so we came to a compromise that, how about we do a pop-up store? And before they knew, I was on the front of real estate agents and had already <laughs> sorted out a location for my store. And the eight days went so well, we ended up selling over 10,000 donuts in oh those eight days. Oh, my goodness. So from there, the store came up for permanent lease. I eventually convinced my parents, after many arguments at the dinner table, 
and the store's been open around 15 months now. We continue to supply around 10 to 20 cafes and dessert bars around Melbourne. So yeah, it's, you know, keeps me busy as well as being in year 12 in high school. So I'm in my final year of school. So I think now's a good time to maybe try some of the dough. Oh, oh, well done. Done. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Good job. Well done. Amazing. Now, fess up the goods. Yeah, let's yeah. try it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so we got our cookie monster, which is filled with cake batter. This is our class clown, which is filled with chocolate hazelnut and then Kit Kat and marshmallow. A Bruno Mars, which is Mars bar and salted caramel. Triple T's, which is choc hazelnut, Tim Tam. <laughs> Date night, which is white chocolate, popcorn, caramel and choc hazelnut. And then our gay time crunch, which is based off the ice cream, the golden gay time, and made into a donut. My favourite. I'll have that one in the middle there, this one here. Thank you. The Excuse class clown. Thank you. Class clown. That kind of suits uh, you. I'll try the middle one. Yeah. Thank you. See? And that's got cake batter in it. Cake batter right? inside, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well you you're going to knock, and, yourself, and out, you, knock you yourself out, knock yourself out, right? You sell it with a syringe Yeah, too. exactly Tastes right. It. Tastes really good. And who comes up with the recipes? So you were, are asking for 200000 yep. for 20% valuing yep. your business at $1 million. That's right. Quite That's that not program. a bad ask for a 17-year-old. When you do that $10,000 worth of sales, how 10,000 donuts. 10,000 10, 10, donuts. donuts? Yeah, and the donuts are five fifty each for retail. Oh. Oh. 55000 on your opening weekend in a uh, pop-up. Opening at eight days, yeah. It must have shut Mum and Dad down, did it? <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I work about 60 hours a week on the business, and oh, then I'm also in, full. In school. <laughs> Take me through your day. A normal day? OK, so a normal day would be I get up around 4, 4.30, um, head down to the shop, get some of the orders and the wholesale orders out, and then from there I'll head off to school, and I get in, get all my homework done in recess, so I try and work through all my recesses, all my lunch breaks. You're working harder than most people I know. Amazing. Yeah. When do you have fun? This is fun. Oh, good This is what good I answer. absolutely oh, love. great answer. <laughs> So can we do the, your current financial performance first? So our total revenue for last calendar year was $500,000, with net profit 130. Wow. This year? Four, yeah, four houses, 850,000, and then three to 350 profit. <laughs> oh wow. Did you clarify for us what you're going to spend the 200,000 on? Yeah, I'd love to have. Bistro Morgan flagship stores. Our product is one of those that people will travel for. Listen, uh, Morgan, I'm already a shareholder in a pretty substantial national donut business, and I'm not sure I'm the right partner for you to scale this next stage. I think you are a force of nature. You're Thank amazing. You. Thank you. But I'm out. No worries. And Morgan, um, you know, for a middle-aged guy who's trying to keep his weight down, I'm really <coughs> concerned about this product. <laughs> Dangerous, eh? <say. laughs> That's a good answer. What I notice about my investments lately in the food space is they are in health and wellness products. Yeah. So, for me, I'm out. Yeah, no worries. Morgan, I think you're such a delight Thank you. and such an energy, and um, I'm sure your parents are incredibly proud of you, yeah. and they should be. Uh, it's not an obvious fit for me in terms of the value that I can add. For this deal, I'm out. No worries. Morgan, if there was one person in Australia. Yeah whose business you love, that you'd love to spend an hour with, who would that be? Um, Janine Ellis. There you go. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mate, you can have that. So, I'll make you a deal. I will offer you 200,000 for 42%. Oh, <laughs> bottom feeder. Come on, he's a The reason he's being a is, this oh. is going to take me a lot more time, so I'm actually valuing in my sweat. <laughs> he's a miner, he can't deal inappropriately with miners. What are you doing? Come on now. <laughs> hey? Are you in or out, Steve? Well, so, um, the deal I was looking at was 
Uh, Two hundred thousand dollars for thirty percent. Yeah. So just to summarise, Janine's offered you two hundred thousand for forty-two percent. Steve has offered you two hundred thousand for thirty percent. Is twelve percent of the business worth the expertise? Mate, Forty-two. That I've brought? Forty-two is horrible. You, you cannot do. For, I, I ban you. I, I forbid you from doing forty-two. Is twelve percent worth the twenty years' experience that I can bring to you during this business? Morgan has landed two sharks willing to invest $200,000 in his donut empire. But they want a much bigger bite of the business than Morgan's proposed 20% stake, with Steve offering 30% and Janine sitting on 42%. I can't... I, I couldn't bear to give away 42% of my own sort of... You're not giving it away. No, no, I know, no, no, that's uh, not, I'm not, I don't mean I'm give away. I'm buying it I know, and I know, also I'm giving you my time. I know, I know. She's ruthless. I think that's yeah. a no. She's ruthless. Make a counter Can you do any better? I'm at 30%, Ooh. mate. I'm at 30%. May I go back and have a chat with my mum and my dad? Absolutely. All right, no worries. I'll be back. Have a chat. Thanks. I'm not to. <laughs> Janine, he's not going to give you 42%. Well, he can come back for the counter. Hmm? You're worthless. I think you need to speak yeah. to Dad. Yeah? Hi, Hey, it's me. OK, mate. We've got two offers. We've got one from Janine Ellis um, yes. for the 200000 but it's for 42%. Yeah. I think you know how I feel about that. Yeah. And then we've got one from Steve for 30%. I think that they're getting uh, something pretty easy. That you've got to stick with 20%. Uh, you don't move from that. Here he comes. Here we go. Oh, his mum. Ah. Mum's crazy. Hello. I can see it. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. You are? I'm Ellie. I'm Ellie's mum. Hi, Ellie. Uh, how are you? Hi, Ellie. Thank you. A proud mum indeed. Yes, yeah, he keeps us busy. And keeps <laughs> you busy. <laughs> and challenged. And yeah. challenged. But yeah, we just call my dad as well. Oh, well, good. Yeah. So you consulted the board, I get that? We did. Yeah. So just to remind you, Janine's offered you 200000 for 42% of your business. Yeah. And Steve has offered you 200000 for 30% of your business. So what are you going to do? So we've had a bit of a chat. My dad was pretty firm. <laughs> uh, so he thinks that I'm a worthwhile investment as such. So would any of you be willing to do anything for 20? $20 is a no. I will do 33%. Okay. I know this. I have lived every up, every down, every tier. So I think you're getting me cheap for 33. Steve, are you going to revise your offer? Um, I'm not. I'm not changing my offer. Okay. So what are you going to do? Morgan, you're allowed to counter. Yeah. Janine, would you do 25 percent? Please, just go into the 20s. Please, oh. Janine. It's Don't get on your knees, whatever you do. <laughs> I want to do the deal with you, but for, for me, I'm, I'm not prepared to move at all. If you walk away from here, I will still spend time with you. I don't want you to feel that it's bad. Yep. I actually know that what I've offered is actually a good deal, yep. but I don't want you feeling that. So you've got me either way, but you can have me as an equity holder yep. or you can have me as a mentor. Yeah. OK, well, um, unfortunately, we don't feel comfortable going above the 20% mark at this point in time. I, I can't go yeah, below. Yeah, that's OK. But I will still spend time with you. Yeah. We would love to take you up on having 
know, a relationship. Mate, you've got me. <laughs> and who knows, I might be an equity partner. Yeah, no. somewhere down the track. Right. But I will definitely, definitely, Thank definitely you. be catching up. Thank you, Janine. Well done. Congratulations. Thank Amazing you. presentation. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, Thank well done. You. Great to meet you. Thank you so much. So, Morgan, well done. Go out of here proud of what you've done. Thank Bye. you so See much, guys. Great to meet you. Good luck, Morgan. Bye. Bye. Take care. Thanks, Morgan. He would have been better off having you as a partner and he will grow faster. So no, no. Thank I you, think Andrew. We'll I agree find, with that. I think he will find he will do OK. I'll help him. I'm real happy to have Janine as a mentor. She's got so Fantastic. much experience in the food sector and it's just absolutely amazing to just pick her brains. Yeah. <laughs> Good work. First to wade into the tank tonight are techies, Johnny and Tony, who treat business like a giant game. We're going into the tank today and we are prepared. Sweet man. ETA, five seconds yeah. to do this. <sighs> Oop, bubbles. Here we go. <laughs> 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 yeah, look at this guy's face. <laughs> Welcome to the tent. <sighs> so uh, you're probably wondering why we've got these uh, crazy sharks of our own and uh, this groovy scuba gear. Not really. <laughs> we see all sorts in here. I think it's weird. That's because we're all about capturing attention and having fun with brands. So my name's Tony Walden and I'm the managing director of Gamify. My name is Johnny Shannon. I'm the CEO of Gamify and the head of sales for Australia. At Gamify.com, we specialize in making branded, personalized video games. We've done games for KFC, Wendy's, Peter Pitt, in New Zealand, and a whole bunch of other brands. These brands use us to have a little video game that can interact with customers. We have created a software which now allows us to create these mobile video games in around one fourth the time and one fourth the price of our major competitors. Just to clarify, you have developed a software system that allows you to quickly produce all sorts of gamification for products and brands of any kind. Correct. I'm looking for um, uh, $200,000 for 10% uh, of our business. With that $200,000 and mentorship, we would like to make Gamify.com a global brand um, and have a heck of a lot of fun doing it. Very exciting pitch, guys. Do you, now, do you want to take your stuff off? Yes, please. <laughs> Great, so before we get into serious business, show us what it does. Let's get down to the real business of playing some games. Mm -hmm. All right. Fascinating. OK. So, yeah, we've got a little game here. All right, just hit play. Are we ready? Johnny and Tony have entered the tank. Help them <laughs> catch Andrew Banks. Swipe on him and avoid being bitten. Ah! Oh, my god. Oops, here we go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. Hey, oh, oh, I got it. Oh, hey, I got it. Oh, my. Hey, look at this. You're I'm making money. Well. <laughs> I'm making money. Oh, I think I'm going to own this company. He's good at making money. I won't leave. He's a gamer. He's a gamer. Congratulations, 14. Yeah. Okay, I think we get the gist. Smart. It's actually smart. Gamification is the future in um, retailing. Do you know anything about my company's involvement in gamification? You're involved? No, I have no. no idea. I feel really bad now. We did one called Free the Fruit. Have you... No, I have not. You've done no research, mate. <laughs> uh, we got 56 million minutes of use. That's and dumb. we actually, our sales increased by 15% during that period. So, so this works, is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, before we drill too deep, let's find out about you. How do you know each other? I had, I had a friend that invested in the company as well, and um, he just said to me, look, what you guys need is to get an ace salesman on, and um, he profiled Johnny to me, and I was really impressed with Johnny. Why? I was impressed with Johnny because of his history. Effectively, he started a company which is listed on the Australian Stock Exchange at over a billion dollars. Wow. What was that company? Push Pay Holdings. Push Pay Holdings, well done. Effectively, when we came across him, he was hard to catch. We had to like pull our socks up and we had to uh, get everything in line for him and you know we had to show that there was potential in this business. And what was it about Tony, Johnny, that, yeah. that somehow convinced you to join this quite wild game show? 
Uh, Tony actually approached me about five months ago to invest in this company. I said no originally. Um, if I was to be honest, the financials weren't very good at the time. I thought, he's got a really good product, but he's not very good at communicating. About a month later, they came back with actual half-decent financials. And I thought, this has got some pretty good legs to it. And I said, um, look, I actually think we can work with this. And so I jumped in it basically pretty much full force. So you've done all the due diligence for us. We like it. Who started the business? Tony originally started it. Right. What shares do you own in the company? 31.5%. You gave him a big chunk of the business. Yeah. 31.5 and you're the balance? No, I'm 20 and then there's other small friends and family shareholders. Effectively, we've then created a new company and brought Johnny into that. So you're the largest shareholder now? Correct. Yeah. All right. We really wanted him. Tony, I'm sitting here and, and thinking it's the Johnny show. Well, that's because he's quite impressive, so... Yeah, I, I don't him care. I mean, that, of, yeah. This was your thing. You've gone and assembled a team, and, and I just want to know how you feel about that, because... Well, I'm, I'm all about the end result, which is making Gamify great. So, you know, effectively, yeah. whatever I've got to do to do it, and, I mean, Very if I owned the whole thing, we wouldn't be here. So tell us about cash flow and what the next 12 months' sales looks like. We've just hit this tipping point, really, where we've managed to, you know, clear our, clear our boards of debt, and we're now starting to be cash flow positive for the first time. So, guys, what are you expecting to get back in five years' time? I think it could minimum, absolutely minimum, be a $50 million company. Wow. You've already said you've, you're already working with some players. Correct. Talk about the success for clients, because really that's yes. where your success is, is with your clients. Absolutely. Uh, so successful. our last big one was probably in New Zealand. We built them a game, and um, of the 11,000 staff that they were pushing it to, we had uh, 7,800 of the staff actually engage with it. Oh, very good. And we had 140,000 plays. That is good. Sharks, what are we doing? I, I'm, I'm going I'm to I'm simplify this for you. I'm carrying some scars from investments in the game space, so when you mention the word games, my, my eyes start to flick a little bit. So, um, I wish you all the best. Um, Before you say I'm out, can I go back like five seconds? That's a no. <laughs> I, I've got lots of exposure in the space. I've funded five games. I know a lot about this. I know how bloody hard it is. I know how well-funded competitors are. If you can nail it and win it, I'm, I've got so much respect for you. Yeah. But it's just not a journey that I, I want to go on. But I'm, I'm done. I'm out. Yeah. Where are you up to, Glenn? You know, this sort of deal, I'm, I'm just completely dumb money. And I'm sitting here listening to my learned chap who's lost a lot of money in this space. He's scaring the hell out of me. Yeah, I don't know this space at all. I, I'm out. It's no good to me. Thank you. Thank you. Really, it's big valuation. I know I can't negotiate you down because it screws the whole cap table. Oh, I'd be open to the negotiate. What, from the 10%? Correct. But that, that's undermining your own equity. That's entry. OK with me. Really? Really, we, you've done your pitch. And, you know, <laughs> I think the, the, the issue is that you just didn't get me across the line. That's true. My gut is telling me back away. So I'm sorry, guys. I'm out. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. I'm curious. I run a services business, the Big Red Group, which provides marketing services to all of our businesses. And I'm wondering if that it fits as part of the services we need to offer. If you're not offering playable ads, you should be. I'm wondering, though, if I need to try before I buy. Yeah. Basically, I think I should become a customer first. If I love it so much, I'll, I'll regroup round. But for right. this deal, how it's been presented today, I'm out. Sure, thank you. Thank you. There's only one shark left. 
You're impressive and you've, you've got proof that you can turn this business into something. I don't know anything about tech, but my digital team are extraordinary. So the only way I can do a deal with you and the only way I can think it can work is this. The deal is $200,000 for 25%. And the deal is subject to our digital team telling me that they can get to $50 million. Janine's just more than part of your valuation. So I just want to clarify, you are here for a $200,000 investment for 10%. Yeah. That's a bit of a haircut. How are you feeling about that? Would you mind if we speak about this quickly? Sure. Thank you. Don't you think they're a little too desperate to do a deal? I just wonder why they would even consider 25%. Yeah, I think he's desperate. They're desperate. I don't know, that's a bit... It's a bit much, isn't it? That's a huge low That's ball. ridiculous. I think she might. That's dreamy. Either can we go 20%? At the... What does that make the valuation? It makes it a million dollar valuation. Ouch. OK, gentlemen. What are you saying to Janine's offer of 200,000 for 25 per cent? Could we counteract? Would you take 20 per cent? Yes, I would take 20 per cent. It's up to you, Matt. You're not happy, are you? No, I'm not really that happy. Why not? Um, it just... Doesn't feel right. Um, I just think that all the other shareholders are going to think that because the amount of capital that's been put in, that, that really it's just not very attractive. I, I think that going there would be a little bit of a desperation play and I just don't think we're desperate. So, are we doing a deal? No, we're not. And that's OK. There's nothing wrong with that. If it doesn't feel right, you don't do it. OK. No worries at all, guys. All the you best, did gentlemen. Great job. The money, guys. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Tell him your story. Good luck. <laughs> He, he, I thought he was going to take me for 20%. Johnny was in at 20%. And Tony's Tony going Tony no. I think it's about he's always winning and getting a deal appears like winning. Maybe. Whereas Tony was absolutely concerned about his other shareholders. Next into the tank are Stacey and Lorraine. They've turned a stressed out mum moment into a fledgling business. We came up with the idea. We've designed it from scratch. And I mean, we did, we did it all from basically a spare room in my house in between feeding the kids. We believe that every Australian family should have it in their beach bag. Hi, I'm Stacey and this is Lorraine and we're from Minnow Designs. Like most Australians, we love spending time at the beach with our young families. And it was on one of these days, four years ago, we came across a problem. Our young toddlers just wanted to go exploring, but the sand was really, really hot and there was broken shells everywhere. We thought that we'd be able to find reef shoes in toddler sizes, but we couldn't. We decided to solve this problem. With Stacey's experience in consumer marketing and my background in fashion design and manufacturing, we went for it. Our first product was the Minnow Neoprene Beach Shoe. Inspired by wetsuits, very soft and pliable on a baby's foot, but it protects them from all the elements. And now we've got our Move On, which has got a hard sole, so it's for the older kids. It's got a more robust design, so it can withstand more terrain. We're very passionate about beautifully designed, well-made quality products for kids, and we've got lots of innovation in the pipeline. We launched in mid-2016. We have a strong e-commerce arm, which is very scalable and we're currently stocked in 120 retailers worldwide, including major department stores such as David Jones. Today, we're seeking an investment of $70,000 for a 20% stake in our business to help fund our expansion into the US. 
So, who would like to make a day at the beach a little more enjoyable for Australian families and make some money on the way? <laughs> well done. Well done. Very good. Really great pitch. It's fantastic. So you're after um, $70,000 for 20%? Yep. Ladies, I have to say thank you very much because obviously you've done some research. Yes, yeah. two for you. <laughs> two, two for me. So um, you should have three. And, you? and these are these are. Um, you probably should have three now. Think about it. that's all right. These, so these are size four for the twins. I take it, are they for my yes. one-year-olds? Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'll be home tonight and give them a go. <laughs> give them a whirl. This looks great. The design's beautiful. The packaging. So congratulations. Mm. Now they're very pretty. Thank you. But you said that you would like and an investor to come in to help with your US expansion. Mm -hmm. You've only been going for 16 months. Is Australia done? No, no, it's definitely not done, but we're a very seasonal product. You have an online presence too, right? 120 yes. stores worldwide online, so why aren't you selling into the US now? We are. So we, we dropped in a thousand pairs, a trial run into yep. Amazon.com. We sold out in three weeks. What's the problem? Three weeks sold out, it should have just went whoosh, shouldn't it? The issue is it's four and a half months for us to get another boat on the water. By the time we'd sold out our thousand pairs, the season was over. Why is it seasonal if we've got kids that want to get outside? Really, you should be positioning it for beach, park, and, and anywhere they're going to run. Yeah, I guess the thing with the soft sole neoprene is it is made out of fabric, so it's designed for the beach. So it really is that seasonal. You're just aiming sitting in summer and that's it. That's what we're finding. That's where, what we're finding where the sales are. And with our um, wholesale in Australia, with all of our boutiques, they're only buying into summer. What's it cost to produce? Landed in Australia, we're at 880. 880? What are your RRP for, please? 35. Oh, far out. Nice. Uh, wholesale? 15.90 on the soft sole and 20.45 on the hard sole. That's about normal for footwear. Yeah. So if work us through the numbers, what was your last year's sales? In 2017, our revenue was $135,000 with a 56% profit margin. In 2018, our forecast revenues are $360,000, scaling steadily to $1.5 million by 2020. And at $1.5 million, get me excited, what is likely to be the cash flow dropping out or the cash dropping out of that. That is a number that has just flowed out of my breath. Um, does anybody have a calculator? <laughs> Stacey and Lorraine are pitching a business that sells hot weather footwear for toddlers, but they've just had a brain freeze. That 1.5 million get me excited. What is likely to be cash dropping out of that? That is a number that has just flown out of my brain. Um. Oh god, I can't remember what we had it fixed. Does anybody have a calculator? <laughs> Here you go, calculator here. What number what, what, do you what like to add? What numbers am I doing? So at gross, it's sixty-three percent on one point five, and then twenty percent in marketing. Seven five six. Does there seriously no one doing anything like this for for toddlers? Not in Australia, no. But out overseas. There's cheaper brands coming out of China. So hang on, cheaper brands, but are, are they... They're not nearly as good quality, the they're made of totally there. different materials. It's only neoprene, with a bit of stitching it. Theirs aren't made out of neoprene, they're made, of, made like of spandex. This is beautifully made, I can see that it's a quality product. And that's what we're trying to push, is our, is our quality and mm -hmm. our love of the design. Yeah. If you, uh, if you really take off and someone comes to you just to buy the brand, are you OK with that? An interesting question. Mm. <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> no, they just haven't thought about it before. No, we haven't thought about it before. And not, not, not straight away. This is still our baby at this point. Well, I mean, you, you get a little Kardashian baby to wear it, and then suddenly somebody wants two million. You. Okay, bye. You, yeah. My well, business. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll move on to the next one. 
I mean, if you expect to be successful, that could happen. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you know where I'm at. Uh, look, I think you guys are terrific, and you, your, your valuation's not unreasonable. I think you've done an amazing job on design, packaging, and you're both very credible. I, I just can't really get excited about it. I'm sorry. I'm out. I don't think the valuation is sensible at all. You know, this is still an emerging and evolving business that is yet to grow up into a real business that I can see that I want to invest in. So, for me, best of luck. I'm out. Okay. Uh, it, it is still early. I'm, I'm not going to confuse my love of the product and my desire to losing my daughter's feet with the desire to purchase your equity. That's a cop out. Um, I really, really wish you all the best, and thanks for coming in, and thanks for the gifts. I'm okay. out. Are you located here in Sydney? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I'm best in Sydney. Yeah. Given that you're local, I'm sure we could have a coffee occasionally, <laughs> and I can support you, particularly around our experience about what we did in the US. I'm also happy to introduce you to big retailers in the US, which I can do. That would be that would That's be fantastic. absolutely amazing. Thank you. But for this deal, I'm out. Thank you very much. Janine. I think your branding's great. It's the cash flow component of it that concerns me the most. For example, instead of going, I've sold all this in Amazon, now let's really go for it. Sold all this in Amazon, oh, I've got to wait. And online, the Chinese ones might look like yours even though you think, oh, they're crap. <laughs> but there's so much to like. You've got a great eye for design and you've got a great eye for solving a problem that's a real problem for little little kids. <sighs> Guys, I'm sorry. Oh, don't go in. I'm sorry, I'm out. Janine, lift them up and then drop them. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I think you're doing a great job. Come back next year. If you've hit it out of the park, I'll invest next year. Okay. That's a deal. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Take care. Thanks a lot. Well done, ladies. Hold me to it. I love it. I'd love to work with them. I'd love to. I don't feel mm -hmm. disheartened by that at all. Actually, I find it a very positive experience. So we'll see you, see you next, next year. year.